into central Wisconsin. The quick movement of the complex resulted in the death of a skydiver, Paul Olson, near Oshkosh, when the strong winds blew him into Lake Butte. These morning storms moved through quickly, followed by the formation of a low precipitation supercell in northern Wisconsin that afternoon. The storm caught everyone's attention when it suddenly produced a tornado. My cue to get on the road was when the storm near Plainfield exhibited similar behavior. I soon found myself in Washera County chasing a tornado warned storm. It quickly weakened below severe limits, but it moved slowly and put on a beautiful display. In the next several days, Mother Nature turned up the heat, giving way to weak and disorganized thunderstorms. These were the most unpredictable type of thunderstorms, the type we couldn't chase. So we stayed put and watched from our houses. Clouds all over the hills, bringing darkness from above. 
And the walls kept tumbling down in the city that we love. Great clouds roll over the hills, bringing darkness from But if you close your eyes, does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? It's been uh, initially a very slow start to tornado season. Uh, you can see the tornadoes here on the map, and they're kind of easy to point out. One in Grand County, one in Columbia County, one in Portage, one in Langlade, and the other in O'Connell County. Uh, you total that all up, and that's five tornadoes so far this year in the state of Wisconsin. One in May, one in June, and three in July. Now, on average, Wisconsin usually has 23 tornadoes. This, this has been actually a nearly a record low. There was one thing that was becoming an issue. Thunderstorms were doing strange things, more so than we had ever seen before. In a way, it was becoming usual for storms to behave unusually, and this was a problem. Mother Nature seemed to have other plans much of the time. Our best answer as to why was to shrug our shoulders and admit we had no idea. It had everyone unsure about what to expect. Parameters suggested tornadoes were a possibility on July 22nd, and it was a surprise when one actually did occur near the cross. I am witnessing my very first tornado. Oh, it is beautiful. I was even more surprised when I filmed my first tornado near Augusta a few minutes later. As soon as it formed, it faded away, with a dramatic rope out even at 25 miles away. Location was everything. If not for that conveniently placed park on a ridge overlooking all the trees, I would have never seen it. I was trying to anticipate movement of a storm that wasn't moving. Later, a supercell near La Crosse produced ridiculous momentum clouds overhead and a stunning sunset near Mauston. Looks like it's written in a different language. That's a cool part. It's purple. It's purple. Look at over there, it's like purple. It's so cool.
Okay, so maybe we were finally doing something right, but storms continued to behave oddly. Expectations were always low and unpredictability always high. During the early afternoon on July 26th, a relatively strong storm moved through Black Creek. Of course, that storm weakened as I closed in, but more formed around it. I intercepted a cell just west of Green Bay that was surprisingly strong. The first round moved out and another developed just before sunset in the same area. Several reports of funnel clouds forced the city of Appleton to sound its sirens even though the National Weather Service did not post a tornado warning. Eight tornadoes had touched down by the end of July. Wisconsin had already doubled the total number of tornadoes in 2012 but was still very far below normal. The increased tornado count attracted little attention and even if it had, it gave no indication of what would happen next.